Hello Saints, good afternoon there to you all. It's a beautiful day out here in Tampa. I'm actually out here in Ybor City today. Today they're having a, uh, a Pride event. This is Tampa Pride 2024. And so I would covet your prayers. As you can see, let me switch this view here. As you can see, there's a lot, quite a bit of people out here. Not, it's not too crowded, but there's a good steady flow of traffic here, of uh, foot traffic, of pedestrians walking through this uh, this street here. I think this is 8th Avenue. I'm not, yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Actually, it's 9th Avenue. It's 9th Avenue. So I, I decided to come out here. I kind of figured that today was the big event for the Camp of Pride. It's not as, it's, obviously, it's not as big as the one in St. Petersburg, which will be coming up sometime in June, a few months from now. We're actually not too far from there, that time point. But I just, like I said, Saints, I would appreciate it if you would lift up a prayer for me out here. Uh, just pray for my protection. I'm actually close to a cop, uh, a patrol car, so I think I'm pretty safe right now. But you just never know, because sadly, the, those in the LGBTQ community are known for being uh, pretty antagonistic, hateful, violent. And so I just have to, uh, for that reason, I just have to, like I said, you know, re request prayer. And just, just pray that there would be some out here that would be willing to hear the message. Uh, I actually already did one one recording, uh, one live recording already. And uh, so I'm going to do another one of the preaching here. Just like I said, if you want to leave a comment, leave any input or feedback, I would appreciate it, saints. But most importantly, I would cover your prayers, okay? So thank you so much. I, so far, I don't see any other preacher out here. I think I'm the only preacher out here so far. And uh, I could be wrong. But that's how it looks right now, as of right now. So, with that, Saints, thank you so much. And for those of you that are able to tune in, uh, thank you for your prayers in advance. All right, God bless, Saints. And I'm going to change the view back to uh, the other way. And uh, feel free to uh, check out some of the preaching here. All right, God bless. Yes, friend. The Bible makes it clear that this world is under darkness. This whole world lieth in wickedness, friend. The Bible says that Satan, the devil, is the lowercase g, God of this world. He is the one that is behind all the deception, the lies, the, the, the lying propaganda that you find common in your news media and the many of today's universities and colleges. Satan is the father. As a matter of fact, Jesus Christ would say that Satan is the father of lies. The devil is the father of lies. And the devil, ha you know, he wants nothing but for you to be destroyed. You know, as an as a open-air preacher of the gospel, I've, I've heard, I've had my time of hearing people walk by me and say they would hail Satan. And I think to myself, well, why would you hail Satan? Why would you want to hail somebody that hates you? But I understand why they do that because they're under darkness. They're under confusion. They're blinded. That's just as the Bible says, the King James Bible. And so it should not surprise me when somebody walks by me and mocks at my preaching and wants to hail Satan. But I want to let you know something, friend. Satan, the devil, he hates you. The devil absolutely hates you. The devil hates your family. The devil hates your, your spouse. The devil hates everything about you. And the devil wants nothing more than for you to be damned, than for you to suffer, than for you to uh, end up in hell with him for eternity. The devil is absolutely bent on destroying souls. The Word of God, the Blessed King James Bible says that the devil cometh not before to steal and to kill and to destroy. Those are the very words of Jesus Christ. He warned about the thief. And I believe he was referring to the devil because the devil is a thief. The devil is a liar. He's the father of it. And the devil, the devil is out to destroy you. The devil is out to, to deceive you. The devil is out to confuse you. And sadly, sadly, it appears that he's already had, he already has you very confused. He already has you very deceived in your darkness, in your sin, of perversion, of homosexuality, sadly, sadly. But my friend, I've got good news for you. I've got good news for you, friend. God loves you. God, the God of heaven,
cares for your soul. The God of heaven, in spite of who you are, what you've done, what you've been involved with or involved in, the God of Scripture still loves you and He wants you to receive His Son, Jesus Christ, so that you can be given the free gift of eternal life. That's God's will for you. It's not God's will for you to be destroyed in hell. It's not God's will for you to die in your unbelief. It's not God's will for you to continue in your destructive. Uh, some people call it a lifestyle. I tend to call it a death style. Sodomy is a death style because it destroys your body. It destroys your body. And by the way, you know, not just the sin of sodomy, not just the sin of uh, gender confusion, not just the sin of homosexuality. The sin in general will destroy you. Sin in general destroys, it kills. It destroys you. That's why the, the King James Bible would say over in the book of Romans chapter 6 that the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. There is a, a price to sin. And all of us have experienced that wage one way, in one way or another. You know, sin is what ages you prematurely. Sin is what makes you miserable. Sin is what steals your youth. Sin is what steals your purity when you're young. Yeah. Is sin pleasurable? Yeah, sin is pleasurable for a season. The Bible talks about that. I believe it's in Hebrews. There is pleasure in sin, no doubt. But the end thereof, the end of that sin leads to death. And that's whether you're talking about, like once again, uh, the sin that's being celebrated here today, the sin of pride, gay pride, or the, the sin of homosexuality, sodomy, lesbianism, the sin of fornication, the sin of adultery, the sin of revelries, emulations, the sin of drunkenness, the sin of orgies, the sin of uh, railing hatred, you name it. So I'm not just here to preach on the dealing with, you know, to preach on the sin of homosexuality. I'm here to preach on all sin because all sin is an offense to God, a holy God. All sin is an offense to a holy, a thrice holy God, friend. Yes. But there is a hope for you. Yes, there is hope for you, friend. The gospel message is what can deliver you from your darkness. The gospel message is what can deliver you from your confusion. The gospel message is what can deliver you from your hatred, your self-hatred, your hatred of others. My friend, God loves you. And God wants to give you peace. He wants to give you peace, friend. Like you'll never know, but the problem is, when you reject Jesus Christ, you, you cannot have peace. You cannot have any peace apart from Jesus Christ. You cannot have true peace, my friend, without the Lord Jesus Christ, because He is the Prince of Peace. He is the Prince of Peace, friend. And the more you reject the Gospel, the more you reject the truth of the Word of God, the King James Bible, and choose to stay in your darkness and in your unbelief, the more hardened your heart becomes. The more calloused your heart becomes, my friend. That's the reality. That's the reality. And the sad part of it is, you don't realize it. You think you're okay. You think you're okay, friend, but you're not okay. You're not okay with God. You're under the wrath of God, friend. You're in darkness. And the longer that you stay in your unbelief, my friend, you're going to end up dying one day. And if you die in that state of unbelief, sadly, sadly, you will end up in a place called hell. You will end up in a place of torment. A place of fire. A place where there's no hope. A place where there's no redemption, friend. This is the only chance you get in this life to be saved. To receive Christ as your personal Savior. You need Jesus, ma'am. You're full of hatred. You're full of confusion, ma'am. God can save you. You may hate my guts, ma'am, but I love you enough to tell you the truth. You're my neighbor, and I'm commanded to love you. You need Jesus, friend. You need Jesus Christ. He's your only hope. He's your only hope. You need Jesus, friend. It's important that you re receive Christ 
as your Savior. You've got to be fully persuaded that Jesus Christ, that He is the Son of God, that He went to the cross, He suffered in your place, He was condemned in your place, He suffered your shame, your guilt, He was made to be sin for you. He was made to be sin for me. He was made to be sin for us. Whom, but He knew no sin. He was the innocent Lamb of God. There was no blemish in Him. There was no fault found in, in Him. Even Pilate, even Pilate had to acknowledge that. Even Pilate said, I find no fault in Him. But still, He ended up delivering Jesus unto the will of the people. They wanted Him crucified. And it all fell into the Father's plan. But I want you to know, friend, that you, you can be delivered from your deception, from the lies of the, of the enemy. Satan, the one who hates you. The devil hates you, friend. Yes, he does. He hates you. He, and he hates your family, too. He wants nothing but for you to be in hell with him. That's the devil's goal for you. The devil's goal is to deceive you. He wants to steal, kill, and to destroy. That's what he wants to do. And you've got to realize that, friend. It's time for you to wake up, folks. Jesus Christ does not want you to perish in your unbelief. He wants you to be saved. He wants you to be saved by the power and by the blood of His Son, Jesus Christ. Yes, by the power and the, by the blood of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Gospel. The Gospel is the power of God into salvation, young lady. Will you believe it? Will you believe it? You know, I'm going to read a tract here. I'm going to read a good gospel tract here that's written by a good pa uh, good uh, friend of mine. And uh, give me one minute here as I find it. It's a good tract. And it's dealing with the blood atonement of Jesus Christ. It deals with the blood atonement of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who wants to set you free. The one who wants to rescue you from your bondage, friend. Yes, that's my Savior. That's my Lord Jesus Christ. He wants to rescue you, friend. Yes, he does. Can I give you this, ma'am? Will you take it? Yep. Thank you. Take care. Uh, let me read this tract to you, folks. This is called, this tract is called Faith in His Blood. Faith in His Blood. And it's written by Brother Dan Sidnor. I think I'm pronouncing his last name right, Sidnor. And he starts out writing here. He quotes from Romans 3, 25, 26. Romans 3, 25, 26 says, Whom God... Oh, one second here, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God to declare, I, to declare, I say at this time, His righteousness referring to the righteousness of Jesus Christ that He might be just and the justifier of Him which believeth in Jesus. Actually, that's referring to the Father's righteousness. But Jesus Christ, He is the Father's righteousness. Let me read that again. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood, to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say at this time, His righteousness, that He might be just and the justifier of Him which believeth in Jesus. Going on here in the, in the tract here. My friend goes on to write here, Much of the world today, much of the world today will profess openly that openly that they know who Jesus is and that they believe that Are he lived upon fun? the earth. I'm enjoying my life, friend. I'm preaching the gospel, friend. Oh yeah, I am too, but my gospel is uh You don't know the gospel, yeah. friend. You don't know the gospel. You need Jesus. Jesus on you, your need, phone? you need Jesus, friend. You need Jesus, my friend. God loves Jesus. you. God cares about you, friend. He does. And he wants you to be saved. I care about you, friend. Please receive Christ as your Savior. Getting back to the track here, my friend writes, Much of the world today will profess openly, openly that they know, uh, they will profess openly that they know who Jesus is and that they believe that he lived upon the earth and died upon a cross. There is something about Jesus that is to be known and believed in order for you as an individual to be saved, he writes. Paul tells us in the gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and where ye stand, by which also ye, have, ye are saved. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Unless ye have believed in vain. 
For I delivered unto you, for I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. How that Christ died for our sins, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. What many have never realized about Jesus Christ is how he died for their sins. How did Jesus die? And the answer is by shedding his precious blood as a substitutionary atonement, as a substitutionary sacrifice in your place in order to appease the wrath of God on your sins. That's what he writes here. It's very important to point that out. Jesus Christ had to shed his blood. He had to shed his precious blood because God required that as a payment for sins. For all the sins of the world, Jesus Christ had to actually shed his blood. It wasn't enough for him just to die on a cross. He had to actually shed his blood. Uh, Brother Dan goes on to right here, he quotes from Romans 5, 9, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. The word justified simply means just as if I had never sinned. The blood that Jesus the blood that Jesus shed on the cross was for your sins personally. While he was there in agony on an old rugged cross, he willingly took upon your sins and suffered the wrath of God in your place, friend. That's what Jesus Christ did, my friend, for you. He suffered the wrath of God for your sins, friend, in your place. Continuing here, um, he quotes uh, 2 Corinthians 5.21, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that, he, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Only the blood of his only begotten Son shed for you, shed for your sins, would completely satisfy the wrath of God. And that is very true. That is so true. It took the blood of God's only begotten Son to make full payment so that so that a full redemption could be provided for you, friend, individually. Continuing here, in Isaiah 53.11, this is the next one he quotes here is Isaiah 53.11, and he quotes here, it says here, He shall see the travail, he shall see the travail of his soul. And he and shall be justified, or sorry, and shall be satisfied. Let me read that again. Isaiah 53, 11, He shall see the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear, for he shall bear their iniquities. Jesus Christ would bear your iniquities, and he would bear my iniquities on the cross of Calvary, on that old rugged tree. Going on here in the in the track, he writes, Do you stand guilty before a thrice holy God? Yes, you stand guilty before a thrice holy God, my friend. Only by the blood and sacrificial death of Jesus Christ, as a holy substitute in your place, are your sins able to be removed and yourself be lawfully justified in the sight of God. And then he, and then he quotes here Colossians 2.13, blotting out the hand, uh, blotting out the handwriting. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances. That, hold on one second here. Wind is a little windy here. Colossians 2.13 states, Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Nailing it to his cross. Yeah. Jesus. Jesus. You need Jesus, sir. You're full of hatred. You need Jesus. No, he didn't. You do. Oh, okay. You're full of hatred, man. God cares about you. God cares about you. I want you to know that. God loves you. God cares about you, sir. You don't have to continue your hatred and your unbelief. God cares for your soul, my friend, and so do I. So do I. <clears throat> you see here, the Bible, he goes on to right here, the Bible clearly states, the Bible clearly states that salvation is given only by grace. That's right. The Bible clearly states that salvation is given only by grace through faith, not by any work of man. Not by any work of man. That's, that's so true. Ephesians 2 and 9 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Lest any man should boast. I go today, folks. Make sure you know Jesus Christ, your Savior. It's important that you trust Christ, your Savior. He cares about you. We want you to be saved. Be saved today, friend. Be saved today. Through the precious 
power and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, friend, Jesus Christ can save you, friend. Jesus Christ can rescue you. Jesus Christ can redeem your soul from all your iniquities. Jesus Christ is the only one who can save your soul from hell, from a burning hell, friend. Jesus Christ, my friend, I'm going to heaven. I want you there. I want you to go to heaven with me. But you have to accept Christ as your Savior by faith and faith alone. That's what it takes. It takes it takes faith in the blood, friend. It takes faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. You gotta accept him, friend, by faith. That's the reality. That is the truth. You must accept him by faith, friend. Now let me get myself repositioned here. As I continue in this track. Actually, let me uh, one moment here. Real quick. You need Jesus, folks. It's time to repent. Change your mind about your view of God and about who you are. Receive Christ as your Savior. It's not too late for you. You can still be saved. God can save you. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He's willing to save you. God is willing to save you, folks. You just believe the gospel message. The gospel message of truth, friend. I want you to know that. All right, continuing here. Let me see if I can... Let's see. Then he writes about Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. This verse plainly says that salvation is not any work that you do. Our best works before God are described by God as filthy rags. Isaiah 64, 6 says... But we are all as an unclean thing, that all our, unri and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. All our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. And we, do, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. What a, what a powerful verse there. God knew, God knew, thank you for that, thank you for that. Appreciate that, ma'am. God knew you would be without hope. Again, he writes here, God knew you would be without hope and could do nothing to save yourself. The creator of the universe knew that the only way he could redeem you unto himself is if he would die in your place. It would cost him the blood of his only begotten son. Romans 5.10 says, For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled we shall be saved by his life. Not only did Jesus shed his blood and die in your place, but he rose again and presented his perfect shed blood before God the Father. Hebrews 10:12 states. Hebrews 23:20. 20, for she lusted after her lovers who were as harmless donkeys, and whose emissions were that of worship. You need Jesus, sir. You're confused, right? You're, uh, why would you? Why would you hail Satan? I know why you would hail Satan. Because you're you're under confusion. You're under confusion, sir. Satan hates you. He, Satan doesn't care about you. He hates you, sir. Satan wants to destroy you. That's not very nice to say. I'm just telling him the truth and love. Well, I'm All I'm doing is telling him the truth and love. Well, Let me continue here. Hebrews 10:12 says, But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. And then Colossians 1:20, And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. That's how powerful the blood of Jesus Christ is, folks. It has the power to reconcile a sinner, a guilty sinner like you and me, to a thrice holy God. Wow, thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Continuing here. Then he writes here, There was nothing left for you to do. That's right. There was nothing left for you to do. Jesus paid your debt of sin. He died for you. The only thing you can do that is not a work is to simply believe. Amen. That's right. The only thing that is left, the only thing you can do that is not a work is to simply believe. Place your faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Place your faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. You've got to believe that Jesus Christ was condemned in your place on the cross. You've got to believe that he died in your place, died for your sins by shedding his blood for your sins. He was buried and rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. 
according to the scriptures, you need Jesus, man. God loves you. God cares about you. I want you to know that you can be saved if you just believe in the gospel. The problem is you don't want it. You don't want to be saved, though. You don't want to come to Christ. You want to continue in your unbelief. You want to continue in your deception. And that's sad, friend. That, that breaks my heart. You need Jesus, man. You're full of hatred. Can't you see you're full of hatred? You're full of anger and wrath and bitterness. God can heal your broken heart, man. I want you to know that Jesus Christ can heal your broken heart. Yes, He can. He can deliver you from your hatred, your misery, your pain. That's what God can do. He can do that, friend. Yes, God loves you. He cares about your soul. He does not want anyone to die and go to hell. That's not God's will for anybody. As a matter of fact, it says over in uh, Matthew 25, 46, that hell was not, well, it was not created for you. Hell was not created for mankind. It was created for the devil and his angels. But the reason why mankind, a man or a woman goes to hell when they die is because they never accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior. They never received eternal life as a free gift. They never rejected the free gift of eternal life, and therefore they had to go to hell. They have to go where the devil's going, to hell. Because they remain in spiritual death. They remain in the spiritually de in the spiritual deadline of Adam. That's the reality. Going forward here, Hebrews 11, 6 states, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Within Romans 5.11 states, And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. The word atonement, the word atonement literally means to be at one with God. You can truly be at perfect peace with God by placing your trust in the shed blood sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Place your faith in the shed blood sacrifice of Jesus Christ. It is that simple. It is that simple. It really is. And then finally, going forward here, this is the last part of the track here. My brother writes once again. He quotes once again Romans 3.25 and 26. He quotes this verse again, Romans 3.25 and 26. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. All capital letters. He, he makes that an emphasis. He emphasizes that. Puts all those words in bold through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. God is absolutely just. God is absolutely just. He will judge your sin. Well, truth be told, he actually did already judge. He already judged your sin. He already judged your sin at the cross of Calvary. Through the precious blood of Christ, God can also be your justifier. You can receive the atonement by placing all your faith and trust in the blood of Jesus Christ. Romans 5.1 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's a powerful truth to, to grasp. Right? That is a powerful truth to understand. The blood of Jesus Christ is what brings peace. The blood of Jesus Christ is what brings reconciliation. The blood of Jesus Christ is what uh, is what bridges the gap. It takes away the gap, the the, the uh, barrier, so to speak. Because all of us that were born into this world, we were born in a dead line called the line of Adam. All of us were born into sin. The reason why you 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 have thoughts of hatred, impure thoughts. Uh, filthy thoughts, unclean thoughts, wicked imaginations, thoughts of murder, railing hatred. The reason why you're full of that stuff is because you're a sinner by nature. It's your nature to sin. It is part of your nature to lie, to cheat, to steal, to, to covet things that are not yours. That's part of your nature, your makeup. It goes all the way back to the fall of Adam and Eve in the garden. When Adam fell by transgression, when he partook of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, Adam became a sinner. Adam became a transgressor. His nature fell. His nature was a became a fallen nature, and it became corrupt. And all throughout his DNA was corruption. And that's why we die, by the way. You know why you and I die, friend? 
You know why you and I age? You know why we grow old and we get wrinkled? And our, you know, eventually our hair falls out? And eventually our teeth rot and they fall apart? You know why? You know why our body breaks down over time? It's because of sin. It's because of the curse of sin. It's because our bodies are tainted with sin. That's why. That's why. But praise God. God has provided a way of renewal. God has provided a way of redemption. And although this world has fallen, although we, you know, this is a cursed, a sin-cursed world, a fallen world, God is still uh, reaching out to you today. God is still reaching out to you today. That's why He, you know, He has me come out here. That's why He sent me out here as a preacher of the gospel. The, the what's proof that God is still reaching out to you is the fact that there are still gospel preachers preaching the gospel to you. There are still King James Bibles that you can find in the bookstore. There are still churches that preach the truth of God's word on a street corner in your neighborhood. That's the proof that God is not done yet. He's still reaching out to you. Hoping that you will repent. Desiring for you to repent of your unbelief. To repent from your dead works. To repent from trusting in dumb idols. And false gods. And false religions. That way you would put your trust and faith solely in Jesus Christ. And in his substitutionary atonement for your sins. It's time to repent, folks. It's time to believe the gospel. Jesus Christ is coming back soon. He's coming back shortly. Now, when he comes back, he's not going to be coming back as a babe in a manger. No, friend. He will be coming back as a conquering king. And he will be taking vengeance on those who know not God and upon those who obey not the gospel. When Jesus Christ, the Lord, when my Lord Jesus Christ comes back at his second coming, when, he, when his foot hits the Mount of Olives, he's coming back for vengeance. He's coming back to take vengeance upon the wicked. He will punish the wicked with everlasting destruction. He will punish the wicked, the evildoers. And he will remove the transgressors out of the land. Yes. The Bible talks about those who do not want the truth. The Bible talks about, there's actually a sobering, a very sobering passage in Scripture. I believe it's in the, the book of 2 Thessalonians, if I'm not mistaken. It's in the book of 2 Thessalonians where it talks about how those who did not want to receive the love of the truth. And sadly, and sadly friend, I'm, a, I'm afraid that that describes many of you out here today. I'm, a, I'm afraid that that describes some of you out here today, friend, sadly. If you don't want to accept the truth of the gospel, friend, God will allow you to be deceived. He will allow you to believe the lie. He will allow you to be damned in your unbelief. That's what God will do. He'll allow you. He'll allow it. That's not God's will. It's not God's will for you to perish. But if you don't want the truth, if you don't want to receive the love of the truth, that you might be saved, then God will allow you to be deceived. He will allow you to continue in your confusion like you are already in right now. Gender confusion, homosexuality, sodomy, lesbianism, that's perversion. It's unnatural. It's vile affections, friend. There's nothing natural about it. It's ungodly. And it's not hate. this is not hate speech. It's not hate speech to tell you the truth in love. I tell you these truths because I do love you. If I didn't care about you, I wouldn't even be out here today. I wouldn't even be out here today. But the Bible does talk about there, there's going to come a time when God is going to send strong delusion. And I believe it's talking about the tribulation period. As a matter of fact, let me see if I can uh, find it here. I want to see if I can find the actual place here. Give me one moment here. I believe it's in 2 Thessalonians, like I stated earlier. The Bible talks about that time frame. 2 Thessalonians. One moment here. Found it here. Okay, yeah, here it is. It's here in Second uh, Thessalonians chapter two, and I'm gonna be, I'm gonna begin here. I might as well begin here at verse one in this chapter. Paul would write here. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto Him. How you doing, sir? Doing all right. How you doing? Good, good. Can I give you something, sir? 
Can I give you a track? A what? Can I give you a, a gospel track, sir? No, I mean, I'm a Catholic, so I just, I'm just, just curious what your end game is. Like, what are your... Sure. I'm just here to, uh, you know, share the gospel with these people. Because I, I do have, I'm a Christian, born again Christian. I come from a bible local church over in Sefner. And I realize that this is just another event, an opportunity to get the gospel out to, so that people can hear it. You know, um, I don't come out here with any, you know, any sort of hatred, not at all. Uh, I know there's a lot of hatred towards the, uh, you know, oh, LGBT community. I mean, I, yeah, no, I just, I admire you. You got a lot of nerves, so good for you. Thank you. I mean, man. I appreciate that. So, no, yeah. Can I give you this? Did you read it? Thank you, my friend. Yeah, okay. Have a good one. You too now. Thank you. Okay, so here it is. This is what I was going to read from. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or, or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter, as from us is that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. It goes on to write here, let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a fallen away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Who opposeth, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, uh, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until... Only he who now... Let me see here. Let me read that one more time. Let's see. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then, and then shall that wicked be revealed. I believe that's referring to the Antichrist. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. I'll read that verse again. It's a very important verse. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, and for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. That's sad. It's so sad that people hate God so much that they would continue to reject the love of the truth until the day that they die, until the day of their death. Or even more sad, to those in the tribulation where God allows those people to be deceived who did not want anything to do with the truth. Yeah. See, I believe that God, God allows people to have exactly what they want to have. If you want the truth, God will get you the truth. It's, that, it's just that simple, plain and simple. If you really are seeking and searching for the truth, God will reveal to you the truth, if you want the truth. However, though, if you, don't, if you do not want the truth, then God will not get you the truth. He won't bring you the truth. If you want to be deceived, if you want to believe a lie, then guess what? God, God will allow you to be deceived. And in fact, He will send you the strong delusion. He will send you the strong delusion. You say, why is that, preacher? Because that's exactly what you wanted. You wanted to believe a lie. You didn't want the truth of God's word. You didn't want to. Uh, you did not want to acknowledge God. You did not want to acknowledge the truth of God. You did not want to acknowledge, acknowledge that there is a Creator who made you after His likeness, after His similitude. You wanted to. Be, you wanted to believe the lie of evolution. You wanted to believe that lie of evolution. 
or some other lie. Like the lie of that there's, that there's more than two genders. No, there's only two genders, and that's male and female, friend. And again, I do not say this with hatred. I do not say this with any type of sarcasm. I say this in love. There's only two genders in the world, and that's male and female. There's only man and woman. If you believe that there are more than two genders, friends, sadly, you are confused. Sadly, you are under one of the many deceptions of Satan, the devil. This is not a laughing matter. I don't come out here, you know, with this lightheartedness. Now, this is very serious. This is sober because we're talking about your soul, friend. We're talking about your immortal soul that's going to dwell, it's going to live forever in one of two places, either heaven or hell. This is serious, friend. You need to realize it's true. If there is a God in heaven that you will give an account to, if there is a God in heaven that you will give an account to one day, and although you may not want to acknowledge, you, you, you may not want to even think about God. I know that uh, Proverbs, someone in Proverbs talks about the wicked, how through the pride of their countenance will not seek after God, and that God is not in all their thoughts. See, that, that's, I know that describes many of you out here today. You may ignore the reality of God, the truth of God right now, friend, but you will, be, you will be brought to face with the reality and truth of God on the day of judgment, on the day of judgment, friend. You will be judged according to your works on that day of the great white throne. You will be judged, friend, according to your works. And you're not ready for that judgment, friend. Trust me, you're not ready for that judgment. You know, I will also kind of switch over and trans transition over to this point. I've preached on this point before, and that is this. For a person to die lost without Christ and to end up in hell, it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of work. You see, nobody goes to hell by doing nothing. No, friend, you go to hell by fighting against the truth of God. You go to hell by rejecting God's truth and God's love over and over and over again. You know, nobody ends up in hell on accident. No, you end up in hell on purpose because you willfully chose to go there. You willfully chose to go to hell by your willful rejection of Christ. That's the reality. When you choose to reject Christ Jesus, when you choose to reject the Lord Jesus Christ and reject His offer of eternal life, my friend, what you choose is hell. You choose to die and go to hell. Sadly. Sadly. I know because you're in unbelief, sir. You're deceived. You're confused. You're in unbelief. No. You're going to be suffering in hell, sir. It's going to be a place of weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. It's truth whether you believe it or not, sir. It's truth whether you believe it or not. I don't have to prove it. I don't have to prove it. You have a conscience. God's dealing with your conscience, sir. The, the creation here, this, this creation, the trees, the stars, the sky, the sun, it proves to you. It testifies that there is a creator in heaven. That's God. And if God is, is the creator, then that testifies that there's a hell. There's a heaven and a hell. So I don't have to prove anything to you regarding hell or heaven. The Bible says you're, the Bible says you're without excuse, sir. Romans one says you're without excuse. You're without excuse. You know that there is a God deep down, but you've got to suppress the truth. You've got to suppress the truth in unbelief. You've got to suppress the truth with your lies. Oh, how sad! How awful! But like I was saying before, friend. Yes, nobody goes to hell on accident. Nobody goes to hell because God did not want them. No, a person goes to hell because they did not want God. They, they did not want to accept the gospel truth. That's why. If you go to hell, friend, I want to let you know, even if you do go to hell, God will still love you. God will still love you. God, God's benevolent love will still be towards you. But you will suffer the wrath. You will suffer the wrath of God upon your poor, wretched soul. You will suffer God's anger and God's wrath and indignation in the lake of fire, which the Bible calls the second death. 
The Bible states in Revelation 2015 that whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire, which is the second death. And then it says over in Revelation 21a, I believe, it says, But the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and the whoremongers and the idolaters and the sorcerers and all liars, they shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. This is the second death. And that's where you're going, friend. If you doubt that Christ, you're going to the lake of fire, friend. You're going to the lake of fire, friend. If you doubt that Christ, sadly, that's where you'll be. That's where your soul will go. And you'll be in torments. And you'll be in torments. There'll be pain. There'll be fire and weeping and wailing and suffering. No hope. No, there's no remedy in hell. There's no remedy in the lake of fire. There's no, there's no water. There's no second chance, friend. There's no hope of ever getting out of the lake of fire once you're there. There's no hope of escape. There's no hope of escape once you're there. You're there, friend. That's your. Once you've once you've died and passed into eternity, the choice you've made concerning Christ that will be your final choice, and you will not be able to repent. You will not be able to go back on your on your decision. How tragic. How tragic. But please, please understand that God through His mercy, God through His manifold grace, how you doing, sir? God through His manifold uh, compassion, would send His Son, Jesus Christ, He would send His only begotten Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to do, go to the cross in your place, sir, to suffer in your place. That's what I'm talking to you. He would go to suffer in your place. You need to hear it, sir. You need to hear this gospel truth. You need to hear this gospel truth, sir. Yes. God would send Jesus Christ to suffer in your place. He would suffer your shame. He would suffer rejection. He was a man of sorrows. He was not esteemed. We esteemed him not. He, he would do, go and die in your place on that cross, shedding his blood for your sins. Even for you, sir. Even for a mocker like you. Even for a scorner like you. He would even go to the cross in your place. The one who mocks. The one who rails. The one who scorns judgment. The one who pokes fun and laughs at the preacher. Preaching God's word. If only you would wake up and see, friend. If only you would wake up and see, friend. The magnitude of God's love. What it cost God to make a way for you to be saved. If you could only realize the great cost, friend. The great cost. What it cost God. God Himself to provide salvation for you. To provide salvation freely for you, friend. If only you would realize it, friend. If only you would realize it. It's time to repent, folks. Believe the gospel. Place in all your faith and trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ. That's His blood atonement. The very precious blood that He shed on the cross for your sins, your iniquities, your transgressions. Believing that He died on the cross for your sins, shedding His blood, buried, rose again on the third day, and then trusting Him alone as your Savior. That's what saves you, friend. I appreciate you being respectful, uh, Thank you. you know, and not not uh, clubbing us. Absolutely, know? man. I appreciate that. And, God and, loves uh, you. Gasparilla, you know, there was a lot of, uh, you know, angst back and forth. Between, right. And uh, I'm a believer personally. You I know? see. But, um, and I don't feel like I, I don't feel like God doesn't, you know, I feel like God loves me. Well, He does, but He wants you to listen to His word, abide by His word. And you, and you know, His word does say that you know, sodomy, homosexuality is confusion. It's not according to God's plan. You know. That's why I come out here. I come out here in love to tell these people the truth about you know you know homosexuality, same-sex relationships, lesbianism, you name it. But it's not just sodomy that I'm preaching against. I'm also preaching against fornication, you know, lying, cheating, all that stuff. It's really about coming to, into conformity with God's word, what He says, the King James Bible, what it says about you know your sin, my sin. You know what I'm saying? But I thank you for your stopping by and encouraging me. Thank you, ma'am. You too. So yes, folks, and I. Um, as I wrap up my message here today, 
at least this message. Uh, just know that there's hope for you. Know that there's hope for you in Christ. If you wanna, if you wanna be saved, God can save you. You're not, you're not beyond the reach of God's grace. I know there's some people, a lot of people in society that have given up on you. There's a lot of preachers, Christian preachers, ministers who have given up on the LGBTQ community. But I'm not one of them. Oh, no thanks. No, it's, it's for you. Just Scientology. Oh, I'm not a Scientologist. No, thank you. No, thank you. That's a cult, actually. Um, I know that there are a lot of Christians who have given up on the LGBTQ community. And that's sad. Because they just believe that, no, they believe that none of you can be saved. That none of you are redeemable. Well, that's not... That's not the truth. You are savable. You are redeemable because the blood of Jesus Christ is that powerful. And, and listen, my friend, if God could save a wicked, vile, wretched sinner like myself, He can save a sinner like you. I want you to know that. You're not beyond God. You're not beyond the, the reach of God's grace in this life. You're not. You're not beyond any hope in this life, friend. You still have hope. God can still save you. But the question is, will you repent of your unbelief? Will you believe the gospel? Will you trust the gospel? Only you can do that. I can't do it for you, friend. But only you can do that. And then if you let me just say this too, if you do, uh, if you if some of you out here do get saved, if one of you out here make the decision to trust Christ as your Savior, I want you to know after you're saved, then God can help you to overcome your sin of homosexuality or lesbianism or sodomy. God can then help you to overcome the sin of uh, gender confusion, transgenderism. God can help you to overcome that confusion once you're saved. He, he will deal with you about your homosexuality and sodomy once you're saved. Once you're saved and once you are a part of His family, once you are a child of God, then God will deal with you personally about your homosexuality. And you can actually be freed from it. You can actually be delivered from it. And you actually, you know, can can uh, end up, you know, becoming a person that has a sound mind, a person that has sound judgment. That's what God can do for you. If you go online, you can find a lot of testimonials out there of ex-homosexuals, ex-lesbians, people that were once involved in the same, uh, you know, quote-unquote lifestyle that you're in, and they got delivered from it through the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. That can be your testimony too. That can be your testimony too. God can deliver you from homosexuality if you will let Him. If you will allow Him to. He can. You don't have to continue in this bondage, this, this grief, this despair, this darkness, this confusion, this darkness, this perversion, this sexual perversion. You do not have to continue in this uncleanness. God can deliver you, friend. He can set you free. He can make you free and free indeed, friend. So be encouraged with that. Be encouraged with that friend that Jesus Christ is your only hope and yes that God loves you the King James Bible loves you it's, it's not the God it's not the will of the Father for you to perish in your unbelief but that you'll be saved by trusting Christ as your Savior how you doing sir? I'm just fine I, I was was ignited about this pastor for 41 years oh. I'm still clergy okay what you're doing is harming the gospel no it's not uh, not at all sir you're deceived I'm preaching the gospel. These people can be delivered from their bondage to homosexuality, sir. I'm uh, preaching the truth of the gospel. You need Jesus, ma'am. You need Jesus Christ, ma'am. You need him. You're deceived. You're deceived. Now, you know he's real, ma'am. You're without excuse. Romans 1 says you're, you're without excuse, ma'am. You know he's real. You're deceived, ma'am. You're deceived. Because you want to be deceived. Sadly. Sadly. May you turn to Christ and live. May you turn to Christ and live while there's still hope. Amen.